What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Man vs. Madden 2019. That's right. We are on to week number two of the NFL season. I am Josh Rodriguez. You can follow me here and here on the social medias if you would like. Listen, week one is in the books. It was an interesting week. Uh, a lot of upsets. One in particular, the Cleveland Browns got their asses handed to them by the Tennessee Titans. Not sure anybody really saw that coming. Also, bad news for another Brown. Antonio Brown um, is in the court system apparently now. We don't know what's going on with that. We don't know if he's going to step onto the football field for his new team, the New England Patriots, which is kind of new news as well since the last time I saw you. So a lot has happened, and it's just week one, a very exciting week one. Um, one, if you're not a Giants fan, I, you know, for one drive, I was pretty happy scoring, going up 7 nothing, and then proceeded to get absolutely throttled by Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. But you know what? I expected that. I picked against them. You picked against them. Madden picked against them. So it was no surprise to us. And speaking about how we did, let's take a look at the standings right now. You, man, are in first place. I, Josh Rodriguez, I am one game behind you in second place, and Madden is in last. So congratulations to you all. You are in first place after week one, just one week. Don't get ahead of yourselves. It's just one week. There's a long season ahead of us. That's right. I will be here throughout the whole regular season, onto the playoffs, onto the Super Bowl. So let the trash talk commence. You can leave comments in the bottom, and trust me, I am reading your comments, I see what you're saying, and it's all good. It's all love. I love you all, despite the fact that you may hate me now, but you'll love me later. Trust me on that. And also, our CBS pool, the link is in the description. If you haven't joined, I don't know if it's too late to join. We gotta check the rules on that. Is it too late to join? I don't know, but join it anyway. Let's see who's in first place. Bradley Peters with 14 wins. That's right, he's atop the leaderboard along with Joseph De Los Reyes. Congratulations, 14 wins for you both. But like I said, it's just one week. Don't get ahead of yourselves. We have a lot of football to predict going forward. And speaking of predictions, it is week two. Let's move forward with the Madden simulations and see what Madden thinks is going to happen in week two. The Thursday night football game, the Carolina Panthers host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Two teams that were fairly disappointing, let's be honest. Both caught L's at home, 0-1 um, going into a Thursday night game. This is, I wouldn't say must win, but it's pretty important. And because of that, I'm just going to go with the more talented team here, and that's the Carolina Panthers. That Tampa Bay defense is not all that great, even though they made Jimmy G look kind of average. Jameis Winston, what's, what's going on with you, man? Bruce Arians is not doing you any favors, not getting Mike Evans involved, all that good stuff. So, listen, I like the Panthers in this one to defend their home turf. I got them winning this Thursday night football matchup. Let's see what Madden has to say about that. All right, it's a tie game. 134 left to go in the game. Jameis drops back, clean pocket, over the middle. It's caught, moving the sticks. Jameis Winston, 22 for 29 in this game with three touchdowns, bouncing back, inconsistent as usual, but this time, in a good way, I guess. This is the good of Jameis Winston. In the no huddle here, let's see if Tampa can get into field goal range. I have a feeling they are. Clean pocket, standing, standing, down the middle. Oh, what a catch! And a timeout is called, going up and grabbing it out of the air. The Bucks are in field goal range. Fast forward here, it's fourth and five. Looks like Tampa did not get the first down, but they're kicking to go ahead with 14 seconds left. Let's see if they make this field goal. The snap is good. The kick is up and it is good. Tampa Bay takes a 27 to 24 lead on Thursday night football. Madden being bold, predicting the Bucks here. Three seconds left, last chance for Cam Newton and the Panthers. This has to be a Hail Mary, right? Let's see. Cam is in the shotgun. Got to run streaks here, Cam. Let's see. Drops back, drops back. That's not even Cam Newton. I just realized that. <laughs> interception. An interception at the 40-yard line. Doesn't even try to run a hook and ladder. No type of Hail Mary. No type of plan. And Bruce Arians and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come away with the victory. So I got the Panthers. Madden has the Bucks. Who do you guys have? 
Next up, we got the Baltimore Ravens hosting the Arizona Cardinals. Now listen, the Cardinals tied last week, but in a way was kind of a victory, I guess. They were down 18 points and their rookie quarterback who struggled mightily in the first half came back, led a comeback of 18 points, tied the game. They could have won in overtime, but they did it. But that's okay. If you're a Cardinals fan, you're encouraged, but I don't think you're going to be encouraged in week two. I got Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens winning in week two. They were mightily impressive against the Dolphins. It was against the Dolphins, so I don't really know if you think that that's impressive because it's not that impressive to me, but it's a win, and a win is a win in the NFL, and I think they win again in their home opener against the Cardinals. Let's see what Madden thinks. Moving forward in the action, 136 left to go in the game. It's 31-21, so basically the Ravens are just running out this clock. Looks like Lamar Jackson and the Ravens continue to put up points this season. The handoff up the middle to Mark Ingram gets the first down, even though Arizona calls a timeout. That's going to do it. Madden has the Ravens beating the Arizona Cardinals 31-21. to They say they're going to be 2-0 on the regular season. I think that's the case as well. What do you guys think? Next on the slate, we have the Detroit Lions hosting the Los Angeles Chargers, who apparently don't need Melvin Gordon. Austin Eckler, holy crap, three touchdowns last week. Congratulations to you, because now you are probably the workhorse of that backfield. Melvin Gordon probably salty back home, but that's what you get for holding out and thinking you're more important to a team's success than you actually are. Shout out to the running backs who don't recognize that they're replaceable. Detroit Lions tied the Arizona Cardinals last week. Looked really good in the first half. I'm a big Matthew Stafford fan, probably because he won me a few fantasy football championships, and I think people underappreciate him. Um, but I'm not picking him in this game either. Listen, if you can't beat the Arizona Cardinals when you're up by 18 points, I don't care if it's on the road. I don't know if you're going to be able to contain Phillip Rivers and that offense when they come into your home building. So give me the Los Angeles Chargers to win this game. Let's see what Madden thinks. Oh, and we got a good one. It's 22-16 with 136 left to go in the game. No huddle. Stafford takes a snap over the middle. Wide open. First down. Detroit's driving. Need to put up six to tie the game. Need to go. Actually, you don't need to go on no huddle here. You're, you're close to the end zone. You can take your time here. You can take your time. Let's see what Detroit does. They're in the no huddle anyway, ignoring my advice. Shotgun snap. Stafford over the middle. Oh, it's almost picked off. Almost. Detroit Lions almost doing Detroit Lions things. That makes it second and 10 for the Lions. I have a feeling that this is not going to go the way Lions fans want it to go. It is now third and two, 46 seconds and counting. They just need two yards for the first down. Let's see what happens here. Stafford dropping back over the middle. Oh my goodness. It's complete. But he is, inc Kenny Galladay is incredibly out of bounds. Like ridiculously out of bounds. How, how does that happen? That is so Detroit Lions. That, that is the Detroit Lions in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, for the past 15, 20 years. Actually, since I've been watching football, this is what the Lions do. So now it's fourth and two, and the Lions have to go for it, right? You got to put up six. Stafford in the shotgun. And a very slow, that was the slowest halfback draw I've ever seen. That was pathetic. Melvin Ingram tackle for a loss, and it's a turnover on downs. The Chargers are taking over. Looks like they're going to escape Detroit with a win. Two seconds left to go in the game. The Lions have one more shot down the field. Let's see if there's a hook and ladder, a Hail Mary. Stafford drops back. Hail Mary, come on. No, it's not a Hail Mary. It's just a side. It's just a pass to the sideline. I, I don't get it. Matt Patricia shaking his head. I'm shaking my head at you, man. What are you doing? What kind of play call is that? And the Los Angeles Chargers win 22 to 16, going 2 0 on the season, sending the Detroit Lions to 0 and 2. The Lions being the Lions. According to Madden, that's something I could see happening because I've been watching that for the past 15 and 20 years when watching the Detroit Lions, unfortunately. So next on the slate, we have two teams that looked pretty good last week. One got a victory, one lost. Uh, the Colts, they lost in Los Angeles, but Jacoby Brissett stepping in for Andrew Luck, looking good. I'm proud of you, Jacoby. T.Y. Hilton getting in the end zone to tie the game. They lost in overtime, but you know what? They were on the road. No shame in that. Marlon Mack looked good. That defense looked 
pretty good. Um, I, I was impressed with the Colts. They're not giving up. I think they're going to fight the season. I think they actually might fight for a playoff spot. And they play a division opponent in the Tennessee Titans who went to Cleveland and laid the smack down on Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham and his expensive watch. And this, for me, is a key matchup. That's right. We're bringing back key matchups. We're going to have five this week. You get to vote on them. To me, listen, this is a division game. This is key. This is going to matter at the end of the year for, you know, playoff seating. Maybe for the division. I mean, these two teams met and in week 17 to see who would go to the playoffs. And the Colts ended up winning and going to the playoffs. So these things matter, even though it's week two. And I'm going to go with the Colts. Listen, I know the Titans looked good last week in Cleveland. And they won and the Colts lost last week. But I think... You know, the Titans are an average football team. I don't think they're anything more than that. I think they're very mediocre. I think their performance last week had to do more with the Browns imploding than them actually excelling. I don't have the faith in Marcus Mariota like Madden does, apparently. I, I just think the Colts are a more well-rounded team. I think they get the victory. Let's see what Madden thinks. Oh, and apparently Madden agrees with me. 31 to 10, Marcus Mariota about to chuck one into the end zone here. Just for fantasy points, I guess. Fantasy purposes. End zone. Incomplete. That does it. 31 to 10. The Colts are your winners going into Tennessee and winning by three touchdowns, according to Madden. So, agreeing with me there, Madden, I think we're on the same page this week. We now head to Cincinnati, where the 49ers march into town after beating Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Bucks. Cincinnati with a close game in Seattle, going into Seattle with that 12th man almost beating the Seahawks. That's tough to do. So shout out to Cincinnati. I thought they were going to get absolutely smashed last week. It didn't happen. Andy Dalton with one of the best games of his career. I, I, I'm i going Cincinnati here. I am. I, I think coming home, I think, I wouldn't say they're riding high since they lost last week, but they looked pretty good. Andy Dalton looked good. He looked comfortable. I think they're out to prove something. The 49ers, listen, their defense looked good, but I think that had more to do with Jameis being Jameis. Jimmy G is not looking like the type of player that a lot of experts say he is. Sorry, Niner fans. I'm not saying he's bad, but he looks kind of average. So I'm going to go Cincinnati here. I don't think they're the better team, but they're home. Home opener. Give me the Bengals. Let's see what Madden thinks. We fast forward. There's 120 left to go in the game. Niners up six. Looks like they're trying to run the clock out. 23-17. This has to be a handoff. It is. Brita up the middle. That's going to end the game. No more timeouts left for the Cincinnati Bengals. It looks like Madden has the Niners winning this one. 23-17. Two straight road victories, which is really hard to do in the NFL unless you're a really good team which I don't think the Niners are. I think they're pretty average, but Madden had them going to the Super Bowl, so it doesn't shock me that they have them winning this game here. 23-17. Who do you guys got? Next, we have another AFC South matchup, and that's the Houston Texans hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars. And let's be honest, if Nick Foles was playing, this would be a lot more entertaining. I got the Texans here. I think their defensive line is going to get after Minshew. Uh, I didn't even know he was in the league. I had no idea who he was. I didn't know who the Jaguars' backup quarterback was, but I didn't know it was that guy who looks like he's 40 years old, but apparently he's in his low 20s. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of him, but Jesus Christ, shave your facial hair, man. Jeez. Um, yeah, either way, I, I just can't see the Jaguars matching Deshaun Watson and what he can do coming off a heartbreaking loss in New Orleans. I had the Texans. I, I thought they were going to win. I was really close to predicting that right. Uh, but Deshaun Watson, listen, he's the real deal. I think people forget about him sometimes because he's hurt. But I think he leads the Houston Texans to victory at home. Give me the Houston Texans. Let's see who Madden has. Game 20 to 14. The Jags are driving with 119 left to go. Shotgun formation. Here we go. Minshew drops back, steps up, steps up, scrambles. Oh, and he's sacked by J.J. Watt. That is his third sock of the game. Jeez, where are you, Jaguars offensive line? No huddle, here we go. Second and 17, next play after that sack. Drops back, clean pocket, clean pocket, clean pocket. To the side, is that complete? Yes, it is. To Keelan Cole, who just lays there dead, and no one seems to care. Not even the Jaguars training staff. He's literally laying there motionless on the floor. Oh, and now there's a timeout, and he's magically off the field. First down, Jaguars. 
12 seconds left, the Jaguars continue to drive, but it's fourth and 11. They need to get at least a first down here. Let's see what they do. The snap, play action, drops back to the side. It is complete. First down, stops the clock. Seven seconds left. It looks like this is going to come down to the last second. Guessing this is the last play of the game. Seven seconds left. Shotgun formation. Here's the snap. Drops back. Clean pocket. Over the middle for the game. Oh, it's off the receiver's hands. And that does it. Bill O'Brien gets a victory. Texans go to one and one. Matt and I on the same page. Next, we have an NFC North showdown. And that's the Green Bay Packers hosting the Minnesota Vikings. Both coming off victories. Very impressive victory for the Minnesota Vikings at home. Smacking up. The Atlanta Falcons, Dalvin Cook, jeez, that man can run. Kirk Cousins, 80% passing completion percentage. That's because he only threw it 10 times. I guess the Vikings is a game script. What do you guys think? You think it's just because they're up so much they decide to run the ball? They just don't want Kirk Cousins really throwing the ball. I don't know what it is. I think he throws the ball more this game. You got to throw the ball if you're going to put up points with Aaron Rodgers. I got the Packers in this game. Why? Because all of a sudden, they have a defense. That's right. Give me the Packers. Madden, who you got? Fast forward into the action. 121 left to go in the game. Packers up two full touchdowns. This one looks like it's going to Green Bay. Minnesota can't really stop the clock on this jet sweep to Devonta Adams. They call a timeout, but you know what? It doesn't matter because they can't stop the clock after this play, which means the Green Bay Packers are going to take this one 39 to 25, winning the first matchup between these two teams. Madden, you and I on the same page this week. What do you guys have in this matchup? Next on the slate is an NFC East showdown. The Dallas Cowboys march into Washington, D.C. to play the Washington Redskins, who gave the Philadelphia Eagles a run for their money last week. Shout out to Washington, making it very, very interesting. But coming away with a loss, they also lost Darius Geis to a meniscus injury. And if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, then you don't know that I also have a meniscus injury. I feel you, Darius Geis. I'm in a cast right now. You can't... Can you see that? Can you see that? Can... I don't know if you can see that. Trust me, it's very uncomfortable. Anyway, I got the Cowboys in this one. I think they win... Uh, I think they win pretty easily. Dak looked really good. I think this is going to be a Zeke game. I think he scores like two touchdowns, something like that. I, I just can't picture the Washington Redskins beating the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys looked really, really good. So give me the Cowboys. Madden, let's see who you have. We fast forward late into the fourth quarter, and oh my god, how about them Cowboys? 56 to 21, not even close. Jeez. Is this Dwayne Haskins? No, Keenum still in, drops back, and it's a touchdown. Congratulations, you cut the lead to infinity. Touchdown Jordan Reed, who apparently is going to play this week and is passing all concussion protocols. You never know with him. I think he's been hurt every other week in his career. But you know what? Touchdown, Jordan Reed. Not going to hate. Here we go. 19 seconds left to go in the game and counting. The Cowboys should kneel here, but they're not going to do that for whatever reason. It said they throw a screen pass for whatever reason, and there's a fumble. I don't understand Madden. Just kneel. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Oh, do a little dance. That, you know what? That, that dance makes it worth it. That made it worth it. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Stupid sexy Flander. It's still 56 to 34. Gonna be 56 to 35 after the extra point. You know what? Maybe they go for two. Who cares? It doesn't even matter at this point. Oh, look. We're still showing highlights of this beat down for some reason. The Cowboys are still playing this game for some reason. And they're still handing the ball off to Zeke for some reason. And... Jason Garrett with a huge fist pump as if he didn't know the outcome for some reason. The Dallas Cowboys go into Washington, D.C., and they smack down the Washington Redskins, going 2-0 on the season. I got the Cowboys. Madden has the Cowboys. Who do you have? Next on the slate, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers home opener hosting the Seattle Seahawks, who had trouble with the Cincinnati Bengals last week at home. Russell Wilson running for his life because of that line. Very sloppy game. It started pouring at some point. I expected the Seahawks to do much better. And I expected the Steelers not to get their hand into them. I mean, are you kidding me? I know it's the Patriots. I get it. I get it. I know it's Tom Brady. I know it's Bill Belichick. But can you at least do a little better than that? Could you at least not lose by 30 points? That was one of the worst performances I've ever seen from the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
And because of that, I'm going to pick them to win this week at home. I think they bounce back. They're not that bad. I think they actually win the AFC North. I, I think they're the best team in that division still. They just had a bad game. Now, they're not at the level of the Patriots. I was wrong to pick them on Monday Night Football. Obviously, I look like a fool, but I don't think they're going to make me look like a fool this week. I think they handle their business at home. I think that defense steps up. I think they get to Russell Wilson because that offensive line is weak. And I think Big Ben makes some plays. Let's see what Madden thinks. Oh, look at this. Madden and I on the same page once again. Steelers up 20, looking to close this game out. And that's what they're going to do. Snell Jr. instead of James Conner. Why, why is that? Who knows? Who cares? Steelers 34, Seahawks 14. They go to 1-1. One and, one, and the Seahawks, they fall to 1-1 one and one according to Madden. Who do you guys have? Next on the slate is my New York football giants hosting the Buffalo Bills. The Bills, second straight game in MetLife. I guess they stayed in that Jersey area. A lot of things to do now. I don't know if you guys are from Jersey or New York, but they're building a lot of nice things around that uh, that stadium. And then you can go across the river into New York City, to Buffalo, I'm sure. Having a nice time in the New York metropolitan area. And I think they win this one. I'm a Giants fan. I Listen, I try to stay realistic. They got off to a good start last week. And I, I know they looked okay at, at points against the Cowboys. And I know the Bills aren't the Cowboys, but the Bills have a really good defense. Josh Allen is very mobile. And the Giants defense is, it's awful. It's just, it's really bad. Give me the Bills. Madden, let's see what you have. And Madden's with me, apparently. 38-13. 107 left to go. Hand off to Frank Gore. He goes nowhere. The Giants not even bothering calling their timeout. Another blowout predicted by Madden. I'm not sure it's going to be a blowout, but I do agree with this. Buffalo goes 2-0 in MetLife, according to Madden. The Giants, they drop to 0-2. I have the Bills. Madden has the Bills. Who do you have? Next on the slate is an AFC East showdown. Okay, I shouldn't say showdown. It's an AFC East practice. I, I don't know what this is. This is practice for the Patriots. Let's be honest, Dolphin fans. You're not winning this game. You're not. You I, Listen, if the Dolphins win this game, comment below on something I have to do. I'll do something absolutely ridiculous. There is absolutely no chance the Dolphins win this game. I mean it. I, whatever gets the most upvotes in the comments, if the Dolphins win this game, I will do that as long as it's not illegal. That's it. Promise. Promise. I got the Patriots by 96 points. Let's see who Madden has. All right, let's fast forward to the action. And Madden, not as confident as I am, although it looks like the Patriots are clearly going to win this game. 34-17, 24 seconds left. From the 12-yard line, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick looking for a touchdown or a first, or a first down. Drops back to the sideline. It is incomplete, making it second and 10 from the 12. Oh, wait, now all of a sudden it's from the 20. A glitch. So it looks like the Dolphins, oh, not, not just the 20, the 20 from the other side of the field, the Dolphins losing. How many yards is that? Let's do some math. That is, that's like 30, that, that, that's like 68 yards they just lost. Holy crap. Madden with the glitch. The Dolphins are going to come away as losers in this game. And it makes me wonder how many times this game has glitched and I didn't catch it. Patriots win according to the Madden. I have the Patriots. Who do you guys have? I'm sure it's the Patriots. I don't even know why I'm asking you. It's the Patriots. We now move to the AFC West, and it's the Oakland Raiders coming off a huge Monday night football victory over Joe Flacco and the Denver Broncos. Sans Antonio Brown. They don't need him. They just need Tyrell Williams, right? And, and Josh Jacobs. Shout out to you guys for putting on a show for your fans last year in that Coliseum. It's sad to see it go to Vegas, although it's kind of exciting for me, someone who loves Vegas. Uh, I don't know if you guys are old enough to go, but if you turn 21, go. Trust me. Um, but you know what? I got the Chiefs in this one. They're just, they're the best team in football. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football right now. Don't let anybody tell you different. I know Brady might have the best career, and Aaron Rodgers in the past has looked like the best quarterback ever to play the game. I can entertain that argument, but right now, Patrick Mahomes is the defending MVP, and he's the best quarterback in the league. Give you the best quarterback in the league going into Oakland killing the Raiders. I have the Chiefs big in this game. Let's see what Madden thinks. It's 31 to 6, just as I suspected. 153 left to go in the game, second and one, and they throw a screen pass. 
to, who is that? Is that, yeah, that's Demarcus Robinson. Eight yards, that should do it. First down, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs making easy work of the Oakland Raiders, just as I suspected. Madden and I on the same page. I'll be shocked if you take the Raiders. I don't want to ask who you got, but you know what? I got to do it, so who you got in this? Next, we have the Saints going to Los Angeles, playing the Los Angeles Rams. And for me, this is a key matchup that we should all vote on. So tell me who you got in this game. I got the Rams in this one. It's I don't hate the Saints. I promise you I don't hate the Saints. I like the Saints a lot. Drew Brees is one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time, but I can't picture them going into Los Angeles, traveling across the country, and beating the Rams at home. Goff is way more comfortable at home. The offense will do better than last week, and they put up 30 points last week. Aaron Donald gets to the quarterback. He gets to Drew Brees and his immobile self. I think the Saints do want revenge from the NFC title game last year, but I don't think they're going to get it yet. Let's go to the highlights. Let's see what Madden thinks. Oh, look at this. Madden disagrees with me so far, at least 41-31. 115 left to go in the game. Goff drops back. He's looking. He's standing like a statue doing nothing. And it's complete on the side at the 36 for a first down. Brandon Cooks getting involved in the action. Seven receptions there. You see no huddle down 10. Goff got to make some decisions here, man. Let's go. Come on. Drops back. Stands there. Over the middle, Robert Woods gets about, what was that, seven-ish? All right, either way, they're driving, but time's a ticking, not using the timeouts. Come on, Goff, call timeout. McVay, what are you doing? This is what happens when you don't call timeout. It's fourth and four with 16 seconds left to go in the game. You need a touchdown here, but instead, Goff almost picked off. That's going to do it. The Saints are going to win this one 41-31, to 31, putting a 40 spot on the Rams according to Madden. They have the Saints. I have the Rams. Who do you have? We now travel to Denver, Colorado, where the Denver Broncos are hosting the Chicago Bears for a late afternoon special. Uh, listen, I don't like the Broncos. I had them last week against the Raiders. Made me look dumb. I thought that offense would be a little more consistent with a Super Bowl winning veteran quarterback at the helm. That wasn't the case. I thought you know, Vaughn Miller in that defense would get to Derek Carr a little better. That wasn't the case. And I just can't see them putting up any type of offense against the Chicago Bears. That defense, I mean, you saw what they did to Aaron Rodgers last week. They put up 10 points. Uh, for an Aaron Rodgers team to only put up 10 points, that's, that's remarkable. So I, I don't think the Denver Broncos score many points in this game. I think Mitch Trubisky will be just fine. And the Bears go on the road and take this one. Let's see what Madden thinks. Oh, we fast forward, and the Bears are winning 42-13 to and kicking a field goal to rub salt into the wound. Oh, it's blocked! It's blocked! It doesn't matter, though. Who cares? Why are the Broncos celebrating? Who cares? You're down by 30-something points. That's going to do it. Uh, yeah, the Broncos. I, You know what? They might be worse than I thought they were. The Bears win this one, according to Madden. I got the Bears as well. Who do you guys have? We now go to the Sunday night football game. A key matchup, that's right, in Atlanta. Battle of the Birds, it's the Eagles versus the Falcons. I'm very, very tempted to take the Falcons here. I am, not because I think they're better. I don't think they're better. I think the Eagles are better. Obviously, I had the Eagles going to the Super Bowl. But you know, Sunday night game in Atlanta, I think that defense is healthy again. They didn't look good to start the game against the Vikings, but you know, they got everybody back. Matt Ryan is better at home. And I'm still going with the Eagles. Yeah, give me the Eagles. Listen, Carson Wentz came on in the second half last week. Deshaun Jackson out of nowhere. Congratulations if you started him in fantasy. That's a really, really, really good start. And that defense, uh, the secondary needs a little bit of work, but I think they're going to be just fine or fine enough to win this game. They give up some points. This might be a 35-32 tie game in favor of the Eagles. Give me the Eagles. Let's see who Madden has. Oh, 141 left to go in the game, and it's a one-point game, 24-23. Falcons with the ball, fourth and nine. They need to convert here. Matt Ryan drops back, throws down the field, and oh, what a grab. Is that who? That's, that is Muhammad Sanu. You see how I automatically thought it was Julio Jones because he's not human and makes catches like that all the time, but Sanu with the catch. Falcons kind of in striking distance, third and 13. They need to get a first down here, or at least come into field goal range. Ryan drops back onto the sideline. Is that complete? Is that a completed catch to Julio Jones? Did he stay in? They say he did. It is fourth and one. The Falcons are in field goal range. Let's see if they kick or go for it because it's Madden, 
and sometimes they just do things like that. Well, looks like they're doing the smart thing, going for the field goal here with 19 seconds left to go. The kick is up, and it is good. 26-24, the Falcons take the lead with 15 seconds left. But you know what? This is Madden. Stranger things have happened, and Carson Wentz is getting the ball. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go from the 27. Carson Wentz under center for whatever reason. Two, three-step drop for whatever reason, and then gets sacked. What? Madden, come on. They couldn't call better play for the Eagles to run. Seriously, what was that? Now the Eagles need a trick play, but Madden doesn't do those type of things. So this is going to be like a five-yard out probably. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's play what BS play Madden draws up. Oh, no, it's a Hail Mary. Proving me wrong. Tipped in the air. Oh, it's up. It's, it's, oh. And it's incomplete. Oh, no, it's not incomplete. It's interception. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That was one of the weirder plays that I've seen so far in these Madden simulations. Either way, the Falcons come away with a 26-24 win in a close, thrilling game. One that I suspect will be close and thrilling. I just think it goes the other way. I have the Eagles. Madden has the Falcons. Who do you have? All right, last game of week two is Monday Night Football in MetLife Stadium. It's the New York Jets hosting the Cleveland Browns. And, I mean... I, what, what do you say? I, I don't, I, Browns fans, I mean, comment, leave, I, what do you, I don't even, I, I don't know how to describe what happened last week. Um, the Jets, same thing with the Jets, now I'm thinking about it, like how do you, you lose, same old Jets? Two teams coming off disappointing weeks to the point where I'm just literally speechless. <sighs> I'm going Browns. Let's see what Madden thinks. Oh, it's 27-27. Two seconds left to go. They're just going to run up the middle of Le'Veon Bell and go into overtime. So this is our only overtime game, according to Madden. It's on Monday Night Football. Let's see who wins the coin toss. Let's see what happens in overtime. All right, you fast forward into overtime. Looks like the Jets got the ball based on the amount of time left on the clock. 7.31 left to go in the game. Third and eight for Cleveland. Let's see what Baker Mayfield does here. Hopefully he doesn't make any crazy decisions. Drops back and just runs right into the defensive end. I mean, he literally just spun into Copeland. Like, you couldn't have picked a worse direction to go in, making it fourth down. Looks like the Browns are going to have to punt. Jets with the ball at the 45, third and 13. Darnold needs to make something happen. Drops back. Over the middle. Oh, and it is complete for first down to the 35. The Jets are in quasi-field goal range. I don't know if you watched the game last week, but field goals were not their best friend. So if I'm Adam Gase here, I'm moving the ball closer. First and 10 from the 36. Darnold in the shotgun formation. Let's see what happens here. Drops back. Drops back. To the side. It is complete. Bringing them closer to field goal range to the 24-yard line. I really have a bad feeling about this. I've watched too many Jet games. I know I'm a Giant fan, but i watched too many Jet games where this turns out bad. If you're a Cleveland Browns fan, you're probably saying, you know what, Josh? I've watched too many Browns games, and I know exactly how this is going to turn out, which probably means this is going to be a tie. It's 30 inches. The Jets need to get this first down. Well, they don't need to, but let's see what happens. They'll probably hand it off to Le'Veon, and no, they don't. Play action. Darnold rolling. Oh, scrambles up the middle. Gets stuck between his guys, and he slides for a first down at the six. This should really do it, right? I mean, this has to do it. This has to end the game. I don't know if they're going to kick a field goal here. They can win it on a field goal, but you know what? Maybe they just decide to punch it in because they just signed Sam Thicken, cut their kicker from last week, and don't have the best luck when it comes to field goals. So let's see. It's third and goal from the four. Make sure Darnold doesn't do anything dumb here. Drops back, looking, looking, decides to run it. Oh, he's got a lane. It's a touchdown. The New York Jets win this one in overtime, according to Madden, 33-27. to 27. Congratulations to the fake video game version of the Jets. You get your first win of the season. The Browns fall to 0-2. I got the Browns. Madden has the Jets. Who do you have? All right, and that does it for week number two. You guys are one game ahead of me, two games ahead of Madden. Congratulations. Listen, congrats. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I'm not going to hate on you guys. It's well-earned. Well-earned. Don't forget, if you're in the CDS pool, link is in the description. 
Make sure you follow up on that. We're giving away $750 of gift cards. So listen, what? it's free. It's free stuff. It's like free money. Go, go to it. Make sure you subscribe to TPS. Hit that notification button so you know when we post a new video, whether it's Man vs. Madden or like the top 10 craziest things to happen on a football field type of thing. I don't know. The top 10 stuff is like every day. It's something that blows my mind. So subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Uh, and listen, I'll see you next week. I'm Josh Rodriguez. I look forward to competing with you all season. I'm, I'm going to make a comeback. I'm going to be here all season, guys. Get used to me. Just get used to me. That's my advice. I'll see you next week.